thank you, Nigel, and uh, thank you, um, thank you for having me. Um, I wonder if I could, is it possible? Thank you. Yes, all right. <laughs> Okay, so um, I um, draw inspiration from um, from the cities um, that um, I've you know kind of visited uh, visit over time. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. Um, I'm going to go back to um, where printmaking started. Um, I have a, a background in um, graphic design um, and um, so um, printmaking kind of started um, when I was at um, when I was at college when I was in my 20s um, so there I was looking at screen printing mainly um, and then because um, I was studying graphic design um, it, you know, my work was more commercially based um, or biased, and so when um, when I went to Trowbridge College, um, which was it started off as evening classes, um, and then sort of progressed into the whole day, um, and um, and then I kind of got to a point where I suddenly thought, well, I kind of. I, I want something else from this. I've, I kind of reached a level and, and felt I needed to push myself a bit harder. Um, so that's when I um, decided to go to apply for the University of the West of England. And um, so I studied for an MA in multidisciplinary printmaking. Um, then I went on to Spike Studio after leaving there. Um, I did a residency um, just before the pandemic. And then um, I'd like to kind of discuss a bit about lockdown because that was quite kind of important uh, to my process. Um, and then I'll give you a little bit of indication on what, you know, I'm kind of up to um, at the moment. That was supposed to go off as I was talking. Uh, so you had something to look at, but um, so yeah, forgive me, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> um, so, for me, um, it's the it's the reveal in printmaking that um, kind of really excites me. It, it you know the I get the inspiration from the the natural or the urban environment, but it's um, as when you when you actually pull back the paper to see what to see what happens because you know like everyone else has been discussing. Um, um, for me that you don't always know what you're going to get and it's those those moments of things that don't quite go according to plan they suddenly you get quite excited and, and go on to something else um, so Trowbridge College um, was where I first started doing um, monoprinting um, so I had a rest from screen printing went on to monoprinting and um, so this one, um, because of the, the time I get to go and see cities, um, I kind of record lots of um, photographs on my, on my iPhone. Um, so I can take them back to, uh, to my studio and then I can, you know, sort of um, print them out. I print them out like um, Polaroids and then I've got lots lots of images in front of me and then that starts giving me ideas. So um, graffiti plays a part in my work and the day-to-day -day marks that get um, that you find um, like a scrape from from a train or, um, or, or a lorry and yeah so um, also went to New York to visit a friend's exhibition in, in New York, and it was just just a weekend trip. Uh, this is a, a few years ago now. And I was inspired by the, the busy, the business of the, the um, 
um, Times Square and all the people, the colour, um, the you know the the, the, the buildings, um, lines, marks, and um, so started making a series of um, these prints on on acetate. So I'd ink up the whole sheet in one go, all the colours on the one sheet. So these are all um, monoprints. Quite, quite simple um, compared to some of the work that um, I go on to in a minute. A um, couple more pieces. Um, again, traffic lights come into play, people crossing busy roads. Um, I was really taken by the, the yellow taxis. Um, they kind of stood out to me. Um, and then um, Bath, I uh, was born and brought up in Bath, and so naturally, um, Every time I go to Bath, it kind of lifts my spirits, and I love the Georgian buildings, um, the architecture, and it's always busy with people, cars. This is Laura Place um, near the Victoria Gallery. Um, and then Milsom Street, um, a hubbub of people just hanging around out, um, outside one of the shops, and the corridor. Um, you know, I don't know if any of you any of you have been to um, Bath, um, one of the um, kind of Edwardian shopping centres, which um, is still, you know, still around. Um, this is looking up the, um, towards George Street at the top of Milsom Street. Again, lots of people, traffic, um, um, the hubbub of, you know, daily life going on. Always something to look at, something uh, a street, a street play, you know, sort of singing songs, and so it's always very, very vibrant. Um, now moving on to um, the University of West of England, um, did a, a multidisciplinary dis uh, MA in multidisciplinary <laughs> printmaking. Um, I felt like I needed to push my boundaries and my practice a bit further, um, learn new techniques and take my practice to the next level. Um, the next level, I wasn't quite sure what that would it was entailing, what it was, but it was kind of a mixture of um, improving my work, you know, being from a graphic design background, I'm always trying to, um, always trying to improve um, a technique, or um, look at um, look at look at work in kind of a, a, a slightly different ways. Um, Barcelona um, um, visited. It was a, a, a weekend break. Took lots of photographs um, of the uh, graffiti, um, and here I begin to home in on on an area. Um, um, bringing in um, sort of kind of um, the graffiti writing as well, but I'm looking looking at more at the um, um, the not so kind of neatly done graffiti. I'm looking more at the kind of the um, um, graffiti that has just like a stolen mo a stolen moment in time and it's change it changes um this was inspired by uh, the cannon on um um Montjuic in Montjuic park um went to see um uh, um Jean, uh, Jean Moreau's um exhibition and so it was a, a bit of an uh, influence coming from from there um, Barcelona I stayed in the um, Bohemian Quarter, and um, so the the walls were, um, were were kind of a great inspiration. There were crumbling walls, peeling paint. Um, so the walls been there for you know like kind of decades of of change and being battered. Um, <clears throat> also started looking at. Um, walls and f not only the walls but at the floors as well so there's very decorative um, pavements um, so I drew inspirations the hexagonal and the and the leaf very ornate um, 
um, um, sort of pavements, and this is where uh, sort of regeneration. So it's mixing mixing the old with the new. Um, these three pieces um, also um, are of Barcelona. Um, they were uh, um, pieces in in the final final show. Um, uh, UE has um, has a publication centre, and you can um, you can go in and you can do um, uh, you know, uh, carpentry. Um, you can do things with metal. So I started to um, I, I, I took some screen prints, um, and because um, because I wanted to emulate the, the marks that. I found in the city, I started um, sort of eroding the, the, the paper, the substrate that um, I was working on, um, and printing over the top, and also using other other printmaking techniques as well. So um, the one on, on the left, Relevance, that I s went into fabrication and started hand cutting some um, shapes, which I kind of found um, if, um, kind of from, you know, um, going around in the city. Uh, the middle one was majority of a build-up of screen prints and then um, using spray paint, but also using negative shapes as well and scratching into the surface and erasing with, um, with sandpaper and then, you know, working on the top. So palimpsest is quite relevant in, in my, some, of my, um, some of my work. Um, I tend to go from quite simple, so that the scene, just, you know, working on the one sheet, uh, one um, acetate sheet plate, um, to building up lots and lots of layers. Um, erosion um, in fabrication, um, I cut out some pieces of copper um, because I wanted to... Um, some of the, the some of the marks on the walls in Barcelona, like stains and and erosion, had some really lovely kind of shapes. So I cut those out um, in fabrication and then would etch into them. Uh, so those were a mixture of oil based um, for the etching and then water based for the screen printing and then again bring, bringing in the pavements. Um, these were these were in the Flourish um, 10th Award um, at the West Yorkshire Print Workshop, um, which toured to Euclid and um, Spike um, in um, a Spike Print Studio, um, and won the prize for recent student graduate. Um, so that was that was kind of a confidence booster. Um, and they've, the um, erosion on the right has been in the Woolwich Contemporary Print Fair, and um, the three were at, uh, exhibited at the Irving Con Contemporary Exhibition in Oxford. Um, here's a few more in the series. Um, what I tend to do is I tend to work on lots of pieces um, at the same time. So I think I had, I think it was about nine pieces. Um, they, were, they were all the same size and they were, eventually I mounted them onto MDF um, and then um, as part, as part of the um, MA um, show, they were displayed on, on the wall without any frames um, and they were kind of coming out from the, from the, from the wall. Um, and I've also used um, Dremel drill uh, as well as etching and um, screen printing. Um, also in, um, uh, on the MA, I was, um, because it was in Bristol, I was looking, looking at the harbour and um, the water because um, I quite often, there's a, there's a water source um, fairly close by to where, where I'm uh, taking my reference from. So um, I'm intrigued um, not only by the marks um, and, and the areas around, um, but also um, with the, the marks with, with the water as well. So those com 
combine. Um, um, after uni, a couple of um, a couple of the other uh, alumni, um, we went to London. We hired um, a gallery, um, the three of us. Um, we felt that was kind of like the next step to um, to sh you know, showcase our work, and that was a really good experience. Uh, and um, it was really good fun. We stayed there for a week. Um, some more of Bristol. Um, tank wagons um, behind the M shed. Um, they've got um, lettering and, and numbers um, um, and lots of patina. Um, also, um, I draw inspiration from road signs, um, kind of, um, and, and graffiti. And again, these were all kind of um, screen printed. Then I raised the surface and then screen print on the top. Um, after uni, um, I dis, uh, applied to join Spike Studio. Um, and so it, I was there for well, it was probably just under a year. I had to, unfortunately, um, give up um, going during lockdown and kind of I haven't gone back since. Um, but these, um, these are monoprint sketches and I tend to use monoprint as a f sometimes as a form of sketching. Um, it... Um, kind of helps me kind of start um, start the process so kind of e ease into something um, sort of quite gently and then it, it will give me ideas um, to, of where I want to you know take the take the project so this these were inspired by the graffiti behind spike print studio and um, um, Bristol docks as well but graffiti is forever changing so um, that uh, the graffiti that it's not there anymore. Um, so the next step was to, um, you know, again, I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone. Um, I applied to do a residency um, at In Cahoots in Petaluma, California. Um, this was just before lockdown. Um, so I went with um, no preconceived idea or plan of what I was going to do, other than I wanted to find inspiration along the journey. Uh, further develop my practice, pushing my artistic boundaries as well as my personal boundaries. Um, I'm quite a shy person and um, I felt that, um, you know, I needed to throw myself into something um, a little bit scary for me. You know, lots of people find it quite, um, quite easy. Um, but um, so, I, you know, I was determined that I was gonna, going to hire a car drive on the wrong side of the road and, you know, all those kind of things as well. And then hoping to d develop uh, new skills and techniques, um, particularly in etching. Um, so this is in cahoots um, upon the left-hand side and it's run by Macy Chadwick, who's next to me, second from the left. Um, and so the other two residents were Ashley May and Lucy Childs. Um, Lucy, um, she stayed in her cottage all, most of the, well, all the time she was there because she was in, wanted to kind of isolate herself and um, kind of get involved with her em embroidery. She makes um, artist books, really beautiful artist books. Um, Ashley May, um, kind of in the middle. Uh, she was in the letterpress studio the whole of the time. So that left the, um, the tack up press and the action studio completely, um, to, you know, for my, for my use. And I was really pleased. So I was there for five days. Um, the access was 24 seven, which was great. Uh, so I only went back to the hen house, which is where I was staying, um, which is just across. From the from the studio, um, and yeah, Petaluma um, famous for its chickens. Um, so all the, the the little accommodations were named after hens. 
um, and it was known as the egg basket of the world. Uh, this is Roger the cat. Um, he, um, he disappeared when, um, whilst we were there. And one evening, um, Ashime and I were um, printing and I heard this meowing. So we both went to investigate and rescued the cat and his owner who kind of was just a bit, lived a bit further uh, along was really pleased and would bring Roger the cat in to see us um, for the remainder of our, our stay. Um, so while I was there, um, I knew I had to find some kind of uh, material to be able to kind of work from. So um, downtown Petaluma was the first port of call um, and there were these beautiful pages from a magazine um, and at, at various stages of decay. Um, and so there's these beautiful pages and there's also this kind of yellow ochre kind of pattern going on and kind of coming up from underneath and that's the glue, um, which, you know, also I kind of, you know, kind of fell in love with really. Um, Dillon Beach was um, somewhere I went to visit on the way to the residency, um, took quite a few photographs there. And the RO Shelling and Grain Building, which is where the chicken feed was produced, um, this tower of um, corrugated iron, um, and it, it just looked like it would just fall over if you just blew on it or just, you know, kind of lent on it. And it um, really caught my eye. So going to the studio, um, uh, so in, in cahoots, they, the studio was not as well equipped as some studios. There was no aquatint box. Um, so what there was um, on offer is, because um, I, want, I wanted to look at sugar lift. So there was um, the option I could use sugar lift. And also there's a product called Big Ground. I don't know if anybody knows about this product called Big, Bra Big Ground, but um, you um, basically what you do is you put the sugar lift on, on the plate and you make your marks um, and then you, um, you, you kind of, you dry it on a hot plate and then you add the, or roll it on the Big Ground and um, then that gets heated on the, on the hot plate for I think it's probably like half an hour. And then um, it gets washed off in, in hot water. And the hot water then reveals um, where the sugar lift was. And then the aqua tint part would be, um, there's a like a spray gun with um, ink, special kind of ink. And so you, you gently spray in a spray booth um, over the surface and what I liked about is the texture is completely different. The dots vary. So you get these dots that look like they're exploding and, um, and they're, they're uneven, uh, which is quite different to um, the aqua tint um, within, um, within the, um, the aqua tint box because it, it falls down and it, and it leaves quite an even layer. So I kind of felt that it kind of, it worked with um, with what I was doing, which is, so th this is one of the, um, the decaying pages and I later found out it was um, a Jehovah Witness, um, uh, Spanish Jehovah Witness um, magazines and they were plastered all over, e everywhere in um, Petaluma. So these three pieces, um, were a result of um, kind of my res my response to what um, what I discovered. Um, downtown um, four is um, that's a, an etching with a um, on on copper, um, and then the second layer is um, dry point etching. So that's two layers. Uh, luminous two. This one is, um, so it's, this is a, a two plate. So the, the yellow ochre is an acetate with carborundum. Um, and then the 
first bottom plate is a copper etching um, and it's inked up a la poupe, um, which means small puppet. So um, the ink is put on the one plate and then rubbed off very carefully so you don't bleed into any of the uh, other areas. Um, and then the cloudy on the right is um, the plate on its own. I like to kind of um, use a plate and but keep adding to it or taking away so it it becomes it becomes a piece of it becomes a piece all on it in its own right um, this is uh, luminous one which is a four color plate so this black is added um, at the bottom you can see um, this was so I did two etching plates when I was there, and um, one or no two dry point um, acetate um, plates. So down, downtown three uh, was um, the second plate, and so this is so it's an, an etching um, inspired by a window that um, I walked past which had like this real just kind of decaying fabric and it's very dirty, um, but look, you know, kind of quite, quite beautiful in, it, in, in its own right. Um, so you can see um, at the top there where the, it's really, really grainy. You can get quite big uh, grainy shapes and then some smaller ones, quite uneven. So this is the um, etching plate and then there's the dry point, and then there's the carborundum, which is the third, and then um, the fourth is where I've, I've gone over the top, um, like a monoprint. Um, and then um, kind of zooming ahead, uh, coming back to um, England, um, uh, I've completely changed the plate as you, you can see, and that's at that point, I, that's when I stopped going to Spike. So I kind of would like to go back at some point. Um, oh, yeah, no, I did three etching plates. So this is a smaller one. Um, the dairy factory, which was opposite the RO Shelling grain. Um, and so with these, um, um, I did various stages of sugar lift um, and so this is they're they're, they're um, kind of they're, they're monotype um, etching plates so there, there's a couple more and I was looking at um, uh, marks that um, that I found and also kind of found items so the dairy factory there has changed so going through different stages um, um, rather than kind of, you know, not using that, uh, not using kind of the early stages of printing, I tend to go back and, um, and kind of turn them into something else. So there was an exhibition at the end. Um, uh, the resident, residency was for five days. Um, and at the end, we had this um, kind of um, party or exhibition with food. And we displayed all, all, all of our work and we kind of like just had a little chat about it and also did a couple of um, artist books at the bottom there um, to um, kind of use up the ink and uh, um, yeah. So um, after I managed to get all of the pieces home, I was a bit worried that I might get stopped through going through customs, but um, I put the, the metal plates in my suitcase and uh, the acetate plates as well, and then rolled up all the paper and, and just managed to get it through um, hand luggage, which was really handy. Um, lockdown, um, <clears throat> that's on the left there, you can see um, the, one of the monoprint plates um, beginning to kind of build up. Um, so lockdown, um, some of the, some of the material that I hadn't looked at, um, I 
kind of really wanted to investigate and I tend to have an idea in my head and we'll have to kind of go back to it and, and sometimes it might even take a year before before looking at it and uh, so this um, this ramshackle building which I've kind of called ramshackle tower um, wanted to kind of show its um, show the, the kind of corrugated and the um, jumbledness of uh, of this building um, uh, so um, these are um, so um, I tend to I tend to look at a scene as a whole but I also zoom into an area but then I also zoom into a surface as well so I look at I'm, I'm constantly going backwards and forwards and um, sometimes my work is um, of course I haven't mentioned about going abstract because of my um, graphic design background which is very tight and neat and precise um, I have since I've stopped doing that I've been trying to you know sort of go more and more abstract and that's kind of one of the reasons I went to um, to uni was to go down more of an, an abstract route. Uh, so these these um, monotypes are inked up a la poupe, uh, all on all at the same time, and then scratched into the surface as well. Um, um, so okay, I'll just go back here. So I also look at um, oil-based inks, but I also look at water-based inks. Um, so the oil-based inks tend to be quite bright, bold, and quite graphic. And then the water-based inks um, tend to have more of a watercolour kind of element to them. Um, and so they're, you know, they're quite, quite different, different ways of... Uh, and, they, and it can get quite messy. So you have to be really careful with the blankets and make sure you have enough protection that it doesn't squidge. Um, onto uh, onto the blankets. Um, so this um, ramshackle chicken feed um, was exhibited at the Woolwich Contemporary Print Fair um, online in 2020. Um, and um, I went on to do a few more in the series. So these two are, I think it's about 52 by 72. Um, and then um, I've zoomed in a bit onto um, areas of interest that, that attract me. And I've also uh, exaggerated the colour as well, um, which uh, so it's you know, kind of lots of um, lines, angles, um, and kind of and shapes um, feeding into these watery, watery images. Um, there's one there that's it's sort of less colourful, but the angles, because um, there's ladders and and um, where this it's like a patch patchwork of corrugated iron um, being built up. So I wanted to kind of give that kind of feeling um, in the work. Um, also going slightly more abstract and introducing some. Um, some of nature as well, some of foliage, um, with some really lovely colours when I was over there, uh, some, some of the trees. Um, I also flit between um, doing one-offs, uh, mono monotypes, and to doing some um, additions as well, but I like to keep my additions varied um, so these are these are a mixture of oil-based inks and water-based inks um, so the a la poupe the the pink and the and the lime green are the oil-based inks um, the black is carborundum um, so they're dry point etchings um, building up on the surface and then using the water water-based ink to get this patchwork 
um, feeling of the, you know, the corrugated going in all different directions. Um, and this uh, Patrick Heights was um, selected for the Society of uh, Women Artists exhibition online in 2021. Um, it's quite nice to, you know, kind of, there's lots of rejections, um, but every now and again, it's really nice to, to get something in, 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 in something. <laughs> Uh, okay, so pre-lockdown, um, I'm going to take you back, because I tend to go backwards and forwards, I'll revisit things, um, because I think something's not quite finished. Um, my daughter here on the left, um, she was doing her um, a degree in fine art in Nottingham. She rang me up and said, Mum, can I come home this weekend? Uh, can we go to Bristol? Um, I want to find some, you know, sort of graffiti and just take some pictures and find some rusty metal. Um, so I said, yeah, come on home. We'll go over to Bristol. And that's what we did. So um, this is graffiti behind Spike Island in Bristol um, and um, Bristol docks, which feature in quite a lot of my work. And then the photographs, um, because I'm, I don't, spend much time in areas and I, I kind of meant I forgot to mention before well I think I did mention that I use monotype as um, or monoprints as um, form of sketching to get to you know kind of where I want to go or to, to test out some ideas um, so I take lots of photographs um, so I can look at them when I get back to the studio and the photographs are on the right um, are of the graffiti that um, kind of, you know, I really wanted to take a bit further. And this image was also um, kind of in my mind, um, uh, Fragments 2, uh, which was based around the Bristol docks and there was um, a Helter Skelter. Um, and so that's what the funny shapes are. It's, um, it's kind of an abstract kind of take on on the um on the helter skelter which was temporarily at the docks uh, and this piece um was in the master's screen and stone exhibition in 2018 uh right so the um the graffiti so this is in lockdown we weren't allowed to go out other than for dog walks um or for short walks with family and um, we were getting shopping online. So we, it was summer, it was really hot. Um, and so, you know, we were eating ice cream and the graffiti reminded me of ice cream with all this spray paint dribbling down the walls. And so um, this, uh, this started doing a series on uh, graffiti um, ice cream and so I was taking inspiration from the from the docks, um, from clouds, um, and um, also I wanted to bring in some made-up names of kind of ice cream and, and desserts um, because they were kind of quite cheery, um, you know, and it were, they were, we were having some gloomy times and just wanted something a little bit more cheery. Um, these um, these five were um, entered into the Tebbs Contemporary Gallery, which is another online group exhibition, 2021, um, which uh, was nice to, although, you know, we couldn't get to galleries, it was nice still to be able to enter things. Um, going back to the residency, after the residency, went to San Francisco for um, a couple of nights and um, went to Alcatraz and was, you know, kind of impressed with some of the, some of the structures. Um, and so I decided to do um, a, a series of monoprint, um, monoprints exploring um, Alcatraz and bringing in sort of the drama, um, atmosphere, um, 
and um, the, the kind of decay, because it's, you know, a, a lot of the buildings are under decay. And uh, so um, that's the warden's house, which is just a shell. Um, and water tower with the quarter martyr's house down on the right hand side and the water tower. So th this, these um, four um, are in trying to create kind of atmosphere and like a mood. Um, and then I thought it would be quite nice to use the ghost prints, which, because um, there was still quite a lot of ink left on the, on the surface. Um, so, um, produced a very different series um, of this, you know, kind of like the same, same angle, um, which um, gives a, a, a much more kind of ghostly, um, what, you know, sort of what might have been um, feel. Um, and um, just see how I'm doing for time. Okay. Um, so I thought I'd give you a little um, insight of what, what I'm looking at at the moment. So um, kind of going, because of the, the, the sets that I did during lockdown, I'm now looking at Alcatraz again, because I think there's just so much, so much more to give. Um, and this time, um, looking at the, 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 the the decay, peeling paint, um, the prison cells were quite tiny, um, like six foot by about four or five feet, they weren't very big at all. And all they had in them was a toilet and a, and a sink and a bed. And I think that one actually has a, a desk in it. Um, so I've started uh, doing a dry point and carborundum plate. Um, and I did it slightly differently. And when I printed it, it, the whole lot came off. So yeah, one of those unpredictable things that you don't know is going to happen. But I think um, I will go back to the way I was uh, kind of inking up, uh, sorry, um, um, protecting the plate with um, shellac rather than, um, it was like an acrylic, an acrylic um, medium, which wasn't really working at all. Um, so um, natural landscape is also a big part of what I do. Um, I look at erosion, which kind of goes with decay, but, um, and water sources. So Barcelona with the beach, so the city and, and the beach. So linking in um, natural landscape. Uh, Dillon Beach um, went there when I was gathering uh, information and took quite a few photos. Recently been um, reconnected with Thurlstone Beach in uh, South Devon. Um, so I'm kind of building up a, a conversation between, between the two um, uh, countries. Um, and this piece is um, Armour Cove. Um, I, I did a, a bigger print, um, which is, you can see the whole scene of the cliff, which um, I haven't, you know, so I haven't got to show you. Um, solitude. So this, this one is a mixture of intaglio and relief. Um, I'm, I'm looking at um, building up, building up the, the um, so building up on, on the paper. Um, different layers, which gives, gives, um, gives kind of depth and, and um, maybe kind of, I'm trying to show that what might have been, um, so it's, it's taken from reality, but it's also not um, completely, um, so it's abstract as well. Uh, and this won, uh, won a prize um, in uh, the Bar Society of Artists 116th Annual Open Exhibition um, 2021, which is very exciting. Um, don't win prizes <laughs> uh, very often. Uh, so that was nice. Nice confidence booster, I think. Um, 
sometimes you kind of go on and you think, oh, you know, producing, why, why am I doing this? You know, um, it's quite nice to have some confirmation sometimes that you're, you're kind of looking at the right, you're going in the right direction. Um, so I thought I'd tell you about uh, some of the plates I've been using in lockdown because I couldn't get to Spike Studio and do etching. Um, on the left um, is a dry point etching with carborundum on the top. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with that um, kind of process. And then um, um, working on card, um, color graph, carborundum, and also scratching into the surface as well. So it's kind of like a combination of, uh, of, of um, techniques there. Um, um, I'm working a lot um, on the natural landscape at the moment. I thought I'd give, show you um, what I'm doing. So I'm, the one on the left is an etching, but I'm um, layering over the top with uh, monoprinted sheen clay and collage, which um, I'm finding quite um, quite addictive at the moment and also uh, solitude series um, solitude um, I've found um, my, my both my daughters moved out I think it was the second lockdown they um, they found a house to live together which is really lovely for them and uh, um, but it kind of I kind of now feel like I'm on my own quite a lot although you know I still see them a lot and you know uh, which is really nice but there are, are times where I spend, you know, kind of like quite a long time on my own. Um, so that is kind of connecting to also to Alcatraz, where you know like solitary confinement and and the prisoners being confined to their cells. So it's all kind of kind of linking in some way, um, and bringing the um, not really urban. It's more, I, I guess, um, historical. Um, um, kind of buildings and but it's still decay and combining them with the um, kind of like the water and the and the rock that it that that Alcatraz is on this is um, there's a rock in Thirlstone which is um, I'm a bit obsessed with at the moment so I'm doing some um, monotypes which are quite abstract with uh, monoprinted sheen clay and collage. Um, uh, coming towards the end now, uh, current exhibition, um, Type Orb. Um, I don't know if any of you have been or, you know, the exhibition is still on until the 26th of February. Um, so attrition one uh, is hanging there now. Um, uh, dry point carborundum carbon and collage. The um, the coloured pieces are um, uh, when I've reconnected with the um, with the um, South Devon beaches. Uh, there's a lot of plastic and um, being washed up on the shore. So this is my way of kind of saying, you know, let's let's be careful. Let's take care of our beaches. Um, so I'm in the early stages. I'm not quite sure where I'm going with it, but um, that is, you know, kind of developing at the moment. Um, so um, yeah, that's kind of whoop, that's kind of it. Um, so you know, if anybody wants to um, see any more of my work, there's my website. Get in touch. Have you know, have a chat. It'd be lovely um, on Instagram or email. It'd be really nice to you know find out what you're doing which should be, yeah, it should be lovely. So I hope, um, hope you've got something from that. Thank you. Sorry, I think I've... <laughs> I'll just ask him questions. So once again, any questions? Thank you. <laughs> Very nice, thank you. Um, I was just struck by the fact that you've done a lot of urban work, but you've gone back to the Devon mm. um, coast and of course Gemma here has done a lot of urban stuff but lately she's yeah. she's doing the clay yeah, she I'm thinking about the great trees of London and the survival of nature in the city and I just wonder whether 
you know, lockdown and the pandemic have uh, affected us all. Do you think so? Definitely. I think so, yeah. I think it makes, it makes us see things differently. Um, yeah, I think our eyes are open. And, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hi. Um, Hi. Just, it's just an observation, really, and I don't know whether you'd um, consciously decided, but you, you were saying earlier on with your career in graphics and your background in graphics, and you, were, you consciously almost decided you wanted to work more in more of an abstract way. Yeah. And some of these later pieces look like they're a combination of the two. Yeah. And have you found a kind of a middle ground that feels right for you? I, um, I think I like to move in between um i think because i go from urban to um uh to the natural landscape i also go from um a scene to um a close up and then to even closer i think i like to i like to look at things in different ways and mm. not miss out right. miss out on something yeah. so yeah i think there's mm. there's a lot of things to to give really mm. Yeah, I think that, that definitely pushes me. My graphic design background, naturally, um, you know, sort of doing several designs for one, mm. for one project, and I think that um, also is, is quite, um, it's quite strong in my work as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Maxine. That was marvellous. Um, so yes, we're done. So uh, just to round up, uh, there's a few thank yous. Uh, to Dylan and Rob, that's done the technical side of um, the presentations today. Uh, to Shropshire Live Streaming, uh, Richard and Martin, who's done the live stream for us. Um, which has gone out and I've had, I had one come up back as a text and it just said, wow. <laughs> which is great um, I hope you've enjoyed today um, it's always insightful to to see how other people work and and get uh, that intimate knowledge of, of the way that they work um, so I'd, I'd like to say a really big thank you to to the four uh, speakers today um, not just for the presentation today but for the hard work that goes into the preparation to put these together. It's, um, it's very, very good. It's remarkable. So thank you very much. So we're done until next year. So hopefully we'll, there will be another, another one next year. So thank you very much. Safe journey. <laughs>